Henry, great to see you again. Well, thanks for having me over. Yeah, and uh, well, we're we're here to talk about this new album that you just came out with, The Highlight Maneuver, um, from your band, The Highlight Maneuver, and the, band, the album is called Tunes. And I uh, just wanted to ask you, um, how does it feel to come up with a, a new album? Well, uh, aside from the uh, the stress of having to pull everything together on short notice and make sure that you got the product before the CD launch and that the PR people are doing what they they said they're going to do and all that, it feels really great. I'm because uh, now I do have the CDs and the PR people are doing it, and so I'm I'm extremely excited about this. It's been well, last time we did this was 2004, so that's a good long stretch without without any new new music coming out and I've been wanting to, wanting to, I had some things in me that needed to kind of pop out, I think that's the way I say it, and now, now they're out, they're here. Great, and uh, could you maybe just talk a little bit about the, the history of the band, um, you know, how did you guys get together? Well, okay, I, I started the, the first Highly Maneuver in 2008, which was about the time that Manteca, which was the band I co-led from 1980 till we stopped officially in '98, and uh, so I, I picked up the I, I picked up the mantle with a smaller group. To uh, I wanted some way of uh, performing my my original compositions. So we've been through a few iterations of the band. We did we, we uh, I put two records out in 2001, 2004. The last the last one which had uh, Jake Langley on it before before he started touring with, with uh, Joey DeFrancesco and kind of disappeared from. Year. And then in 2007, Manteca came back to life, and I felt uh, I wasn't prepared to be involved in organizing two bands at once. Manteca is a nine-piece band, and it takes precedence by virtue of necessity. It's just so much work to do, and so I was happy to have that come back. But uh, after a couple of years, I realized that what I was missing was the opportunity to have a small, flexible unit that could take a simple tune and just expand it on the spot. Whereas any any large, as you well know, a large band requires prep and, and it takes a certain amount of momentum. Yes, and it, you know you have to you have to file a flight plan for it. Right. You can't just sort of take off and, and let it go wherever it goes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I really wanted something a little a little looser. Uh, and so I. In the, in the interim, I had been playing with some of my other favorite musicians. Now, Charlie Cooley, who's the drummer in Manteca, is also in Highwood Maneuver. Uh, he sounds great, too. He's yeah. a wonderful drummer, and I mean, when he joined Manteca after that, I never thought about the issue of time never happened again. We just, we play as one. It's, it's a beautiful thing. I just understand each other well. And uh, uh, so he was a great choice for, for this project. And Stacy McGregor, the pianist, I, I I've known her probably for 20 years. She's always knocked my socks off. She just dives into whatever you, whatever you put in front of her. She she just takes no prisoners. And uh, the the fourth member is a young woman named Allison Young, who's a sax player. She studied with Mike Murley at U T some years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first time I heard her, uh, I didn't I couldn't even see her when I when I heard her the first time. I just heard this this sax sound that reminded me of my dad's old records. And it was so uh, comfortable to me and and appealing that I you know that as soon as I as soon as I heard that and we played I invited her to play a couple of a couple of songs with us we had a trio gig Stacy and, and Charlie and I said would you like to come would you come and play a few songs and boy did she ever pass that audition so uh, that it also became sounds wonderful she had a really real unique feel on, on a lot of the tunes so yeah she had. She has an old soul in her, so even the modern songs, there's something about the sound that's kind of, that's that's uh, familiar, and, and she put there's a character to every note she plays. I think that's that's a simple way of yeah. saying it. And and you know there are spectacular horn players in this town, lots and lots yeah, of them. Sure. But but I wouldn't say that that that's necessarily their main feature in some cases. There are a few that are very. Uh, recognizable. Alice, Allison, I think, has has a very personal sound, mm -hmm. and that's what appealed to me. Right. right yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And was there a, a story or a concept about about the album that you were trying to 
get to? Uh, not not intentionally at first. Uh, Tim, uh, it, it turned out that there are two songs on the record that uh, are sort of inspired by cartoons. And so the little joke in this whole thing is, is that I these doodles on the cover, uh, I did the first one of myself as my business card years ago, and then, then I did one for Stacy and Stacy and and, uh, and Charlie, and so uh, I, uh, when Allison joined the band, I, I did one for her. But so so the the, the, the little joke is the tunes is actually T O O N S as in cartoons. Mm -hmm, yeah, uh, right. So we have two tunes: Meet the Sprint Phones and Moose and Squirrel, which is uh, if you're old enough to remember the Rocky and right. Bullwinkle right. show. Which is, yeah. So I was inspired inspired by by that. So that, as far as concept, that was kind of an accident. My concept, frankly, is I write simple tunes and I like to play them with musicians who take them and, and expand them their way. And I'm inspired by the people around me. As a bass player, I, I play my best when, I, when I'm playing with people with ideas. Simple as that, you know? I mean, I can, I can read the chart and put down exactly what notes are necessary for the chart, but it only turns into music with, our, with my ears. And, so it and sounds really, really fresh that way. Good, good. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it grows and it's different every time. We had a rehearsal today and, and it was different from the gig we did last week and I dare say Friday night is going to be different again and that's, that's, that's the way it should. I think that's kind of like jazz or something. Yeah, yeah, it's living and breathing. That's living like, and breathing. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's the deal as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And maybe you talk just a little bit about your, your writing process and you get a, get a tune, um, you know. Like. Well, I, I I have to say I'm not I'm not a trained composer. I I, uh, I studied theory when I was taking piano lessons early on, but I didn't really take jazz theory, nor nor did I study bass. Uh, so it's more it more it comes more from my ear than anything else. And I tend to be perfectly honest. I'm uh, Writing is not a natural process. It's not. So, it's not my favorite thing to do. I do it if there's an idea, and sometimes there'll be something bubbling in there that I don't even know what it is until I get downstairs and I'll, late at night I'll be playing, and an idea will will come out. And sometimes I think my best tunes have I I describe it as just kind of popped out. I don't know how. I I I didn't go in there to write Ladybug Waltz, for example. It kind of happened, and and. Uh, and that turned out to be a, a you know a fairly satisfying tune by you know by, by all standards. Um, so when I the only time I've 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 written um, I I do actually write on demand when I'm doing a project. I've done a few documentary soundtracks, and uh, some years back in the '90s, I was I was the musical director for a couple of uh, uh, awards shows. And so, right. so some of the some of my tunes started as fifteen second stings oh, uh, right. because I had to write. So I went downstairs and I wrote I wrote something, and a couple of them have turned into uh, quite uh, successful tunes in the sense of they're fun to play and people enjoy listening to them. That's that's my right. idea of success. And you had a, an association as well with uh, Sharon Wilson Graham. That was my day job when <laughs> I guess right. it kept me out of smoky bars from from nineteen eighty till till ninety eight one way and another. Uh, Manteca only played one wedding in our entire career, and it was uh, Bill Usher, who was Sharon Wilson Brown's producer, when they were just starting out. And there I was, bouncing up and down in this wedding tent, just at the point where they were going on the road for the first time. They wanted an enthusiastic bass player. Bill came back from his honeymoon two weeks later, made, gave me a phone call that set me up basically for the, you know, I worked with them for eight years and then I was Eric Nagler's musical director mm -hmm. till 95. So that kept me, as I say, at, you know, doing, doing tours where we finished a show, at, our shows at eight o'clock at night instead of working smoky bars all night. Right. So that was very healthy and it, it, it had allowed me, uh, they were flexible enough so that I, it always meant, I could always be available for Manteca. So it was a beautiful, beautiful balance. Mm. I got to do. I got to do. So you're pretty lucky with that. Huh? I was very lucky. That was a talk about right time, right place. That mm -hmm. that really that was a, a perfect, perfect moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now maybe we could talk just a little bit about the studio that you guys you guys recorded in. Okay. Well, we did we did this project. There's only five songs on this. It's a it's an EP. Um, 
And we did three of them in a studio called Revolution in, in East End Toronto. And uh, that was specifically because when, when I resigned from Manteca in, in two, well, it was just a year and a half ago, I made that decision because I, I, couldn't, I couldn't crank up the Highland Maneuver again while Manteca was still going full bore for me anyway. So uh, when I resigned from the band that I had led for most of 30 years, they gave me a very gracious going away gift, which was a day of recording for whatever was coming next at, at Revolution Studio. So we did three songs there. And, uh, and then uh, I had the opportunity to go back to Canterbury Sound, which is one, one of the places that I've worked a lot over the oh, years. It's a great studio. Yeah, it's a great Canada. studio. And, and I know the engineer, Jeremy Darby, there is an old favorite of mine. So I, I, for my own comfort zone, we went there. And so we finished the record. We did another two tracks there. And, and that was uh, a couple of months later. So it, it's, we did the first tracks in May last year and then the rest in the fall. And it's, it's been doing, I've been doing it in little bits. I had a, it was mixed by a good friend of mine, another children's performer uh, named Jack Brunsky, who I, I work with in his, mm -hmm. in his, uh, you got a work studio or something? He has a, he has a basement studio where he's yeah. recorded all his albums. But for me, what I like about Jack is he's uh, the consummate musician. Mm -hmm. I mean, his songs for kids are simple, but, but he, uh, all of his music is complete. Uh, if he writes a song in an Andy's kind of style, it sounds like it's a you know it's it's a, it's a Putumaya record. If he writes mm -hmm. something that sounds that, that that that's supposed to be South African, it sounds like Soweto. It's it's quite remarkable, and he has, so he has beautiful ears and a, a wonderful sense of music, and, and uh, uh, so I asked him to. I asked him to mix this, and I think he did a wonderful job in. Well, I, you know, I particularly noticed that, like the mixing on and everything. Good. It's, it's like you know, mix, you're not supposed to notice mix. That's that's yeah. the thing about it. If a good yeah. mix is is like a good bass player, <laughs> you know, right. he's doing his job if you don't notice him. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, that's what I like about Jack's sensibility is uh, you know, all you do is massage it a little bit until it it feels the way you want to hear it. Mm -hmm. I'm very pleased with with this with the sound of the record. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah. All right, well, thanks a lot, Henry. Thank you very and much. And remember, it's Tunes from the High League Maneuver, the name of the band. Thanks so much, and great to talk to you. My pleasure.